Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you've had a great week. If you're new here, hi, my name's Bryony. I post a new video every week, including social media reactions and social commentary. So if that sounds good and you like my vibe, please consider hitting the subscribe button. I would love to have you stay. For the last few weeks, I have been really focused on trying to trim down and lose a couple of kilos in preparation for a holiday that I have coming up in September. So I still have time. I don't want to go too crazy, but I'm just focusing on cutting my calories back where I can. And at the gym, I've shifted my focus from more weightlifting to more cardio. And today I actually have, an, I actually achieved a new personal best on the rowing machine. The rower is my favorite cardio machine. I love it. And today I did 50 minutes on the rower and I rode 8,100 meters. So that's actually really good, I think. And, you know, I don't go crazy on it. I really just focus on steady state. I just pick a pace that I can maintain and I just row, row, row. And sort of every five or 10 minutes I'll stop and just like stretch my back out, have a quick sip of my drink and then I get back into it. And yeah, I've just been really, really loving it. And I just want to, when I go to the gym, I want to focus on burning as many calories as possible. And when I eat, I want my food to be prioritizing protein and as low a calorie as possible. So that's been my goal so far. I, so far, I don't know whether I'm really seeing a lot of results. It's sort of, it's hard. I don't have a lot of body fat to lose. And I find that um, like the less weight you have to lose, the harder it is to do so. I think the bigger you are, like the fatter you are, the easier it is to lose weight and to lose significant amounts of weight, you know, over a shorter amount of time because, you know, you, you only have to make a few sort of lifestyle and diet changes when you're really big to have the fat start melting off because the human body, it's not meant to be obese. Your body you know, you, the, the more calories you eat, obviously this is just thermodynamics, the more calories you eat and the less you burn, the bigger you're gonna get. And your body, as soon as you make the changes to um, eat less calories and burn more calories, your body, it wants to shed that weight. So you're gonna start losing weight quickly and easier than when you're sort of my size, I'm only five foot three and I weigh like, at the moment I'm sort of weighing about 57 kilos, which is, that's heavy for me. Maybe for you that doesn't sound like a lot, but for me on my frame, that's pretty heavy and I feel like my jeans don't fit comfortably and yeah, it's just really bumming me out. But I've got a goal for this holiday. I just want to feel good in my bikini and, and I want to look good, so... <laughs> So I'm just gonna keep working and yeah, I don't really so much track my calories, I'm just aware of my calories. I make smart choices about the things I eat. If there's a lower calorie option, I always try and go for that. And my husband and I like to go out for uh, date night dinner just once a week. On a Sunday night, that's when I allow myself to just go out to a restaurant, I pick whatever I want on the menu, it doesn't matter, it's usually like, a chicken schnitzel or sometimes it'll be pasta or we'll share a pizza or something, whatever. I just pick whatever I want and that's my once a week treat. One type of content that I really enjoy watching and it's actually kind of motivating when you're on a weight loss journey yourself is reactions to body positivity, fat liberation, health at every size content. I just think that some of my, well, some of my favorite channels are like The Cynical Dude and um, My Thoughts Will Probably Offend You. I just find those channels and the way that they react to and engage with body positivity content is so hilarious. And it's actually really informative as well. Like My Thoughts Will Probably Offend You. I Yeah, I just find that I actually learn a lot from watching that as well as it being entertaining. And the kind of people that they react to in this body positivity, health at every size community, I just, the things that they say are so crazy, so anti-science, 
and just actually really sad the way that they enable themselves and the way that they make excuses for just their laziness and their gluttony. Yeah, I just, it's actually unbelievable that there is this whole community of people out there that really want to push this agenda that you can be healthy at every size, being fat is beautiful, it's society's fault that fat people are discriminated that, that fat people are discriminated against and it's all society's fault for not making more space in the world for people living in a larger body and it's just it's actually wild to me a lot of the stuff that that they say <laughs> honestly I can't believe it so I thought it might be fun for us to have a look at another subreddit that I've found this one is called r slash fat logic and in the subreddit information, it says, fat logic is anything that deviates from the scientific facts on body weight management. This can range from fundamental misunderstandings of how biology and physics work to lengthy political diatribes about how everything is society's fault. Falling victim to fat logic means accepting misinformation that will harm efforts to keep your body at a healthy weight or to lose weight if you need to do so. So basically everything that the Health at Every Size and Fat Liberation community stands for. <laughs> so let's have a little scroll through this subreddit and see if we can find anything funny to react to. Thin privilege is being able to fit places. The idea of thin privilege is that thinner people have more privilege in society than fat people because of systemic um, discrimination making seats too small, making uh, doorways too small, making seat belts too short, etc, etc, for fat people to comfortably fit. That is systemic discrimination. And if you can fit in those things, that's a privilege. Let's read a little bit more of this post. Thin privilege is fitting. Turnstiles, students' desks, roller coasters, toilet stalls, folding chairs, chairs with arms, restaurant booths, outdoor gear, bath towels, blah, 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 the list goes on. And I would argue that the true privilege is to have so much access to such abundance of food and the ability to consume so much food and to do so little physical activity that your body gets too big to fit into a seat that everyone else can comfortably fit into. I would suggest that that is the true privilege. There is no privilege in taking responsibility for what you eat and putting in the work to maintain a healthy body. That's not a privilege. That's just personal responsibility. The BMI is racist. The BMI is like a unit of measurement that rates your uh, that calculates your height versus your body weight to determine if you're a healthy weight or overweight or obese. And it, it only measures your height versus your weight. It has nothing to do with race. But let's see what this person says. I'm five foot nine, 170 pounds. On paper, I'm overweight. My BMI is 25 point something. But I look thin with the exception of my mummy tummy and size FG boobs. Science is racially biased. BMI was developed based on white males, so don't expect it to factor black feminine features. What is this person saying? That having huge tits and a fat belly is a black feminine thing? Any, any woman of any race can be overweight or obese. Like, that's not a black thing. When I, like, think of the Olympics. Have you ever watched the track and field in the Olympics? Nine times out of 10, it's black athletes that are taking home the gold, silver and bronze medals because genetically they have such physical prowess and, and more muscle development and, and more physical ability than other races. I don't think being fat and being black have anything to do with each other. So I don't know what this person's saying. That's really racist. How is just... A unit of measurement gonna be racist come on now that's just that's really reaching 
Confused about how weight stigma creates poor health outcomes? I've been putting off care for a health concern because I don't want to get lectured about my weight. Now the health issue is worse and I need to be seen. This is just one way that weight stigma affects health outcomes. There are many fat people like me who delay care hoping their health issue will get better. Then when they are finally seen, it seems like the health issue is worse than a thin person would experience it. This confirms that providers already existing fat bias and leads to blaming and lectures and the cycle continues. There are so many other ways that weight stigma affects health, health outcomes, like what kind of care am I gonna get when I do see the doctor? Will I get tests, medication, the referrals I need? Will my condition be taken seriously? Will I have to argue with the doctor to be identified as non-compliant, affecting future care? So this person is basically saying that it's the weight stigma that's causing the health outcomes for them, not the weight itself. And I would argue that if you weren't so big, you wouldn't be experiencing these health issues and you wouldn't be needing to see a doctor and this would not be a, such a common concern for you. Like, if you are presenting to a doctor with a health issue that is directly related to being overweight, they're going to prescribe weight loss to you as at least part of your treatment. They're going to need to weigh you to determine if they're going to give you medication and how much of it you'll need. And like all of these other concerns, if, if you're going to a doctor, for example, with sore knees and you're morbidly obese, they're going to say to you, you need to lose weight because that's going to be the number one easiest thing to fix this sore knees problem. And then if you lose weight and your knees are still sore, then they're going to go on to like, okay, well, what else could be causing this knee problem? But if it's obvious that your knees are just buckling under your immense weight, yeah, they're going to prescribe weight to you. And it's not a lecture. It's just them literally doing their job. If you see a body acceptance post and your first thought is, but being fat is unhealthy, you're actually implying that you think it's okay to oppress someone that isn't healthy. Everyone deserves respect regardless of their health status. Well, yes, obvi obviously everyone deserves respect, but shouldn't you respect yourself enough to take care of your own health and well-being and your own body? You were given one body in this life. You should respect it enough to eat within a calorie maintenance and do exercise to keep yourself fit and strong. That's all I'm saying. Last one. This person says, I go to the gym three times a week. I have gone from needing a wheelchair most days to being able to go for a hike. I can outlift most gym bros. Not that I want to. My goal is endurance and health, not crazy high records. My diet is textbook healthy when it comes to macros. I'm also overweight. Nobody knows why. It's defying every doctor's logic. This is just my body. And it's a good body. I love my body. And some people really can't handle that. So this person really thinks that they are the only human being on planet Earth that can defy the laws of thermodynamics. Incorrect. Maybe in terms of macros, their diet is really healthy. But even if you have a healthy diet, it's still um, possible to overconsume calories. And going to the gym three times a week and lifting. Like obviously weightlifting is super good for your body and your, and your strength, your bone density, your muscle mass. It's really great to be lifting weights, but if you're overweight, what you really need to be doing is steady state cardio. And that's gonna burn the most number of calories. And if this person was eating at a calorie maintenance or even at a calorie deficit, and they were doing more cardio and burning burning off those calories they would be losing weight it would be scientifically impossible for them not to lose weight so that was just a little snippet of some of the crazy ideas that exist within this body positivity health at every size movement so how about we head into the kitchen and i'll show you what i've been eating to try and lose a little bit of weight of myself because i'm not afraid to say that my body is my responsibility and the way it looks is a direct reflection of the choices that I make in my life. 
So let's have a look at some of my current food choices. Hey guys, we're in my kitchen now and I changed into my comfies because it's super cold today, but I just thought I'd quickly show you some of the things that I like to eat at the moment that I'm trying to lose weight. So for breakfast every morning, I have one of these tubs of uh, Greek yogurt. Normally I get the Yopro ones with the higher protein, or I'll just choose whichever brand are uh, on sale. This week, Coles didn't have any of them on sale, and these Chobani ones were the most affordable. So I just bought a bunch of these Chobanis, and they're really yummy, and they're pretty low calories and quite high protein, even though this is just the regular, not the higher protein. So I love these and definitely recommend. And another thing that I've been really obsessed over are uh, these sort of little mini protein bars. These, what brand are they? Onset protein bars. They come in four different flavors and these are actually from Aldi and I love these. I have at least one a day every day. Super yummy and pretty good stats on them as well. Another favorite, they're not quite as good but they're still pretty good like in terms of their stats, are uh, these ones from Coles. These are, honestly, these are so delicious that they are like having a chocolate bar to me. Like if, if I was gonna choose between having a Kit Kat or one of these, I would pick one of these because it gives me the same sort of feeling of having a sweet chocolatey treat, but these are so much better for you. These uh, like nut protein bars from Coles, I big recommend these. Another thing that I picked up from Aldi is instant miso soup. I really love these when you just want something like a hot drink to sip on. These are super yummy. They are pretty high in sodium, but there's nothing wrong with sodium, but the calories is, are really, really low. And miso soup is just delicious. And this is just such an easy thing you just mix it in with some hot water and it's just delicious. And it really makes you feel like you're having like something hearty and hot, even though it's actually super light. For lunch today, I'm gonna have this packet of tuna. This is like a, a Mexican tuna and beans in a packet. And I'm just gonna have this on some of these rice thins. So that's gonna be super high, super high protein, reasonably low calories. These are really, really yummy and like good to have on the go. The only thing I would say about them is like, when you open the sachet and, and squeeze the tuna out of there, it's almost like sachets of like cat food. That's how it feels to me. Like I can almost imagine like just squeezing this stuff into a cat bowl and having a cat eat it. <laughs> But like, that sounds disgusting, but honestly, these are super yum. And like, I guess I would rather it be in a tin. It would probably feel a little bit more luxurious, but yeah, I recommend that. So this is gonna be my lunch today. And tonight for dinner, my husband, Matt and I are gonna have chicken with zucchini and this rice and quinoa. So basically these sliced up bits of chicken breast. I'm going to season with either ones, either one of these. I've got some like, what are they? Moroccan and Portuguese seasoning for the chicken. And I'm gonna have zucchini. We're each gonna have one zucchini. And I'm gonna have some scrambled egg with it. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna serve that on this rice and quinoa. And to, spice it up with a little bit more flavor. I've got these as well. These like really 99% fat free, pretty light dressings. I've got a balsamic and an Italian. So basically it's just gonna be uh, chicken, zucchini and rice with a little bit of yumminess on top. So that's gonna be my dinner. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you liked this video, please hit the like button. If you hated it, please tell me down below in the comments what you didn't like about it. And if you've watched this far, please comment your favorite vegetable emoji. Mwah. Bye.